Okay, so Sunday morning, had a really good couple of days. Well, I had a really good week actually. The cab over is nearly ready to be raptured. I've fiberglassed and filled most of the joins. Went a bit further back on that one because for some reason, I don't know why, but the board each side that I used to fill that gap kind of pulled in a bit on the frame. I think the frame was so big, I found it difficult to measure it in a lot of places. And I think those two, pieces at the back when I welded everything up I'm sure they pulled in by about five mil each side that's pulled those boards in so I've had to build that up with filler which I'm not too worried about it's actually turning out really well it's nice and flat up there so by the time that's raptured it should look fine um, had a really great day yesterday as I say I managed to cut in all of the holes for the windows these windows haven't been fitted yet because we're waiting for some screws to arrive today. But as you saw, Megan and I managed to get the windows, three of the windows fitted. And uh, the box looks so much better for it, uh, inside and out. We're all really pleased with those. And it's great. We're, we really feel as if it's starting to move along really well now. And I love it because... Uh, the kids and them have totally bought into this project. They're all invested in it. We all love it. We're really, really pleased that we've done it. We're all very tired. We've all been working really hard on this. But in the next week or so, it's all going to pay off. This was where the original door was and it's all filled in really well. It's nice and smooth. And I'm hoping that when I'm not, I'm not a body man at all, but uh, well, not car buddy, man. I'm hoping that when this is raptured, you don't really see the transition between these panels too much. I'm sure they're going to be, uh, the, the joints there are going to be very good and nice and smooth. We've got a door coming tomorrow to go in there, which is going to be a, another great step to get done. I'll be cutting that tomorrow and I'll have to make some aluminium steps after. But uh, it's Sunday morning today and I just fancied a nice little easy project today that didn't involve climbing up and down step ladders a million times a day. I've been doing over 10,000 steps a day and I think <laughs> about 8,000 of those steps have been up and down step ladders for the past week or so. So today I'm going to connect up. Uh, these are the lights, the uh, wires for the side lights under here. I've got all the wiring for the rear lights and the one that's hanging down is actually for a trailer board so I'm going to keep that, that trailer board one connected and use that for when we put bicycles on the back I'll probably put a trailer board on the back as, as, a, as an extra measure to uh, show where the tail of the truck is but the two sockets there are where my wiring is for all the rear lights and today I'm going to hang the rear lights under here. I've just bought some. This side I've got uh, two number plate lights as well. And uh, I'll show you how they're gonna do. Just let me grab my tea. Most important thing when you're having a relaxing Sunday. I think if I get those on today, I'll be happy with that. These two pieces are aluminium and we're actually from the fridge boxes and they covered a lot of the wiring over and they've turned out to be perfect for me to make my light brackets so this is one of the lights and as you can see it sits in that tray perfectly there's actually two holes to drill for the bolts on the back and when I have it will sit down almost well I can't see that that could be any better for what I need to do so, uh, so the idea is I'm going to cut some of these off drill the holes for the lights to bolt on. I can bolt through these holes onto the back of the chassis so I don't need to drill any more there but I think I'll drill some through the back edge and go up. I've got two nice little LED number plate lights so I'm going to weld two tabs on here for the number plate and also that will hold the number plate lights and um, hopefully we're going to end up with two really cool little uh, rear light brackets 
I think what I'm going to do today is film myself making these. I'll have a chat with you at the end when they're finished and uh, hopefully it should be quite interesting. This is my pedestal drill. Lovely old thing, really old, probably older than me, and I love it. Served me really well. Now, if you've ever, I need to drill a 22 mil hole in these um, in these light brackets, just in the middle there. If you've ever tried to drill a hole that big with a normal drill, you'll have noticed that it, it goes three sided. It's getting almost like a um, yeah, just a tri sided shape. It won't drill it round. So I'll show you my little technique for drilling a, a round hole with a big drill like that. I'm not going to go into the details too much, but uh, hopefully it might help someone out there. Then we put our 22mm drill in. As I say, normally, if you try and drill sheet metal or anything with a hole with a drill like this, it goes into a three-sided shape. What you do to get over that is you get a small piece of cloth like this put it under your drill and there you've got a perfectly round hole no three sided shapes there that's perfect. You can thank me later for that one. Uncle Roger's tips and tricks. There you go, look. Perfect. All you need is a nice slow feed and a nice speed, uh, slow speed as well. And you come out with a lovely round hole like that one. Right, let's see how our light fits on there. This is actually going to be the driver's side, driver's side light. So, yeah, they've gone in there really well, and we'll put something on there to protect the light a bit and give it a chance so it doesn't get squashed. Nice tight fit on the grommet, which is exactly what we wanted. And it more or less holds the light on its own, like so. Oh my god, that's worked out so well. And that obviously goes back over there, that sleeve. So, yeah, one light bracket, almost. A bit more to do to it. Though. I just welded these on. I thought the camera was rolling and it wasn't so sorry about that. Just uh show you that, just tick those on. They're gonna hold the number plate or the license plate. Okay, I need to cool that down a bit. So we've got lights 
the brackets are all finished now I added these on to each side there and there to stiffen it all up and it's really turned out nicely now got the other side done as well and I'm just wiring them up because there was a towing socket on the back of the chassis it's quite easy to work out which uh, cables go where Today the job is to make the frame to fill in the back of the camper here. We're going to have a large opening almost like a door on its side here, a window and then there'll be a window inset in there that's a metre long and 500 high so we're going to have the choice of just opening the window or opening a great big door type window on the back and it's going to be on gas struts and we'll be able to sit on the sofa and look out and I'm dreaming about sitting there and watching the rain. First job for today and I've been looking forward to doing this is taking these doors off. The only problem I've got is I'm on my own. I have a cunning plan. I'm just going to get on with it and see if I can get, well not see if get them off. They've got to come off today because uh, I want to get this rear frame put in. Here's my technical drawing for that frame. There's the large window in the middle and this is the outside frame and all of these sections where I've got these dots are sections of panel that I've got left and I need to cut them to go in here and then I'm going to have to join them on the dots with fiberglass. But I feel like I'm the fiberglass man now. I've actually got the hang of it. I've never uh, done any before this job and it's actually a lot easier than I imagined is that I've got a really nice bit of damage there and it's pulled this frame around so I've got to straighten this out now before I can get my aluminium frame in there and take these off which I think is going to be fun the last time I did any I had to to drill them all out which was really good fun so what I'm thinking with this is, because this is stainless steel and I think it's probably 4mm thick, this isn't just going to hammer back into shape. These panels would be easily damaged as well. So I think what I might do is put a cut in here with an angle grinder and see how we go. See if I can hammer that back in and then squeeze this back round with and then hopefully we'll be good to go. Yeah, I've got a feeling this is going to be a bit of a problem. I just tried uh, to undo these with an Allen key and I put some heat on it and as I expected they're well and truly seized in. This one I actually hit with a hammer and chisel to see if I could get it started and nothing happened. So the only option is to drill them and I've got two, four, Five, two, four, five, <laughs> two, four, seven, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen. Six, twelve, fourteen, eighteen. So we've got eighteen to drill out. These are going to be the same size thread as the others. The best way to do this is to get yourself a big drill, a rechargeable drill. Wouldn't be man enough for this. You'll be charging it up every day and you'll probably burn it out. You want a drill like that as a pilot hole to drill straight down through the bolt. And then you want a drill like that that's just a bit bigger than the thread size on the bolt so that it takes the head off and just makes it easy to get the, get the head off the bolt. He says, that's the theory. Oh, you also need a bit of WD-40 for some lubrication. So we'll try that now and see how we get on. And also, I don't say this enough on my videos, wear air protection. These are proper safety specs, but they're UV safety specs, so they've got protection from the sun as well. 
and wear some gloves when you're working with stainless because it gets a little bit sharp and it likes to cut you. First of 18. Don't want it too fast with this kind of stuff. It's probably 316 stainless which is food quality and it's quite tough, quite resilient. easy way to get them off. And I do think if I got some mold grips I think those bolts may come out on their own which would be nice. So I want to cover these. I've got these, these two, these and these and I'm going to make something that goes on my frame to cover them. I've already, I've already made three plates to go up here to hide these so they should look quite good when they're, uh, when they're finished. Well, that's all of those brackets off and the hinges. I really can't tell you how much fun that wasn't. That was painful. There are the heads all drilled off. And these are the hinges and locking brackets. And I've got to say, that was a very unpleasant job to get the ladder to do it and drilling on the ladder is never good drilling stainless steel 316 bolts is never good but anyway it's done now and uh, it'll all be forgotten in the midst of time won't it Here's the aluminium frame I've made to go in the back to blank it all off. As you can see I've added tabs onto the top and down the sides to uh, cover up the holes in the original frame where the door hinges were bolted on. Same across the bottom and uh, I'm just about ready to put it in now. This is going to be good. So. Uh, I'll get on with that and then uh, start to put some panels in. I love that rivet gun. If you're ever going to do any work like this, you may have seen other people on YouTube talking about these things. They are honestly one of the best tools you can buy. I love it. I think it's awesome, that thing. Here's the cable for our stoplight. I'm going to put a stoplight up at the top. So I've run it all the way up in that plastic trunking and I'll sit the panels over the front and uh, that'll be nice and safe and won't get damaged in there. So I'm ready to put these uh, panels in now and I was going to try and use these offcuts to fill it in but uh, 
to be honest it was absolutely driving me round the bend trying to figure out the best way to do it so a decision had to be made this is um, part of that decision and over here is the other part of that decision I'll have to uh, I'll have to fix that at a later date, but um, to be honest, I got to the point where I just want to get this finished, get this this panelled in today. That means I can put our sofa in place, I can just get on. So the decision's been made. I'm going to try and make some storage cupboards for the camper. This one is more of a triangle and I think this will lend itself better to uh, what I need to do. As you can see there are welds to clean off in three places on every one which is a bit laborious but shouldn't take me too long to get some pieces ready and uh, see what I can do with them. Probably the first thing I should do is clean my bench off. Does your bench look like this? Maybe it's just my way of working, but it seems to get results, so I'm not going to change it. <laughs> So these are all the uh, pieces I'm going to need to make up these cupboards. Cut those and mitered them. They're all the same length. These are the uprights that are going to form the corners. And uh, this one I need to join to get the length I need. I need to lengthen this piece of section there by 370 mil. So I'll do the mitre on there, join them together, and then I'll chop this off where it needs to be. This was the first storage cupboard frame I've made. I'm actually really pleased with the way it's turned out. There's going to be uh, doors on here on each one of these, so there'll be three doors, three separate compartments. And the aluminium profile I showed you has lent itself really well to these. They're actually so light and strong and they, they look nice as well. They've got these nice little chamfered edges on here with them all TIG welded up. They come out a treat. They come out really well. Really pleased with this. So pleased in fact that I've made another two. <laughs> this one is the um, opposite one of that one to go on the uh, the other wall these are going to go above the kids beds and this one is a long one to go across the back doors or the, the back wall of the camper above the the window that we're going to put in so we're going to have storage cupboards right the way across the back and along the sides over the children's beds and uh that's ideal it's just what we wanted we want um we want a lot of storage for clothes and stuff so these are going to be right, perfect we've hoovered out or megan has all the mess and now we're going to get this tiger seal on 
Uh, so Megs, do you want to have a start? So give it a squeeze and in each corner. Quite a lot you want so that it, it'll all stick. It's coming out, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's just quite, oh God, just quite hard to... Yeah, it does take a bit of muscle actually. Oh, it's not as nice as the one on the old um, airline, is it? No. So the wood's in. Megan's now drilling the holes. Cool. Is that all right, Megs? Yeah, that went in. Nice one. Well, Megsy, mm -hmm. some people might say this is a boring job, but I think it's riveting. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 That's so bad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, Megs. Not... Oh, did you hear that? It's <laughs> awful. <laughs> I've been dying to use that one, Rog. Megsy, you're welcome. <laughs> so we're now going to see the finished result. Got four rivets in each corner and the wood's been tiger sealed on, so it's not going anywhere. And we're really pleased with it.